Good evening and welcome to our COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. Here are some of the highlights this hour. Today, Presidential Task Force reveals plans for a boss package for frontline health workers. On our theme of the day, we discuss health workers' susceptibility to the COVID-19 pandemic. And United Kingdom website overwhelmed by coronavirus test requests. Remember that at Thursday's briefing of the Presidential Task Force in Abuja, the Health Minister, Dr. Sage Hanira, noted the dangers facing health, the health sector, particularly in curtailing the spread of COVID-19. At that press briefing, he told the world that over 40 health workers have tested positive to the coronavirus while some are under quarantine. The more scary part, according to him, is that the number may rise unless those concerned use their protective gears and handle the virus professionally. Now, our theme this evening is the susceptibility of Nigeria's healthcare workers, and we have a lineup for you with experts dealing with this issue in the course of the program. But right now, let's bring you the figures from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, showing COVID-19 in Nigeria nearing the 1,000 mark after confirming 108 cases of COVID-19 yesterday. This brings to 981 the total number of confirmed cases in the country, 197 patients discharged and 31 deaths recorded. A look at the breakdown of the cases across Nigeria showing Lagos uh, with the highest figures, 582, followed by the Federal Capital Territory, 133. Kano is in third place, 73 cases, followed by Ugun, 29, or Shun, 20, or Yuan Edu, 17. Bonu, 12, Kwara and Akwaibom, 11, Kaduna and Gumbi, 9, Bochi, 8, Delta, 6, Ikiti, 4, Ondo Rivers have each, uh, while Jigawa, Enugu, Niger, Abia States have two cases each, and the others have one cases each. The Presidential Task Force had its routine briefing today, and the Secretary to the Government of the Federation raised hopes on the welfare of health workers in Nigeria when he said that the Ministry of Health has signed a memorandum of understanding for a robust allowance for frontline health workers. I'm pleased to inform you that the Federal Minister of Health, working in conjunction with the MDAs and the health sector professional bodies, have signed an MOU for various allowances and other incentives. Please to inform you that in addition to what the federal government is doing, the insurance industry has responded massively to the call for support. The Presidential Task Force has received a life insurance cover to all frontline workers on COVID-19 for a maximum of 5,000 health workers who are employed to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The premium in the sum of 112,500,000 to cover, I mean for cover, has been fully paid by the Nigeria insurance industry in line with the principle of no premium, no cover. The PTF wishes to thank the insurance industry immensely and calls on other sectors of the economy to rise up to support the efforts to fight COVID-19. Health Dr. Sage Hanire efforts are on to build more testing capacity for the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. The COVID-19 capable national laboratory network led by NCDC has capacity to test over 1,500 samples per day in at least 13 laboratories. But the present utilization rate is barely 50% since we averagely test about 600 samples per day, being the samples received at the centers. Efforts are on 
to increase the number of functional laboratories in the country. However, we need to meanwhile improve surveillance, sample uh, collection strategy, and transport logistics to laboratories, and also reduce the turnaround time for tests. In our strategy, testing positive is followed by isolation and treatment as needed. Those who require no treatment still need to be in isolation in the interest of the public and their household. The Minister of Foreign Affairs clarified the news making the rounds on 72 Nigerians uh, testing positive for the virus in China and the plans of bringing willing Nigerians in the United Kingdom back to Nigeria. From our um, consulate, they added that a number of Nigerians were asymptomatic, you know, but the figures that we had were nine. When I met with the Chinese ambassador, um, and he talked about a plane that uh, had come in uh, to the country uh, in which there were Nigerian passengers uh, that subsequently tested positive. It was also within that range, you know, 9, 12, 13. So where the uh, figure 72 came from, I really have uh, no idea. The second question was about, um, you know, Nigerians uh, in the UK and um, the whole issue of testing um, before boarding. It was finally decided that uh, since there were some countries where it was not going to even be possible uh, to get any testing done, but it is enough, in fact, that at the airport you just do the superficial testing, temperatures, and um, you know the general look if somebody is coughing uh, or not coughing. And um, for reasons such as that, even if somebody at that stage, you know, tested negative, it could be an incubation period, and they could actually uh, be uh, uh, positive, and uh, and so on. So that it was better uh, for all the normal precautions to be taken on the flight, and then uh, to be tested when they uh, reached uh, the, the country. And staying with our theme, healthcare workers surviving the pandemic, our correspondent Kayla Magua is in Abuja and joins us now. Kayla, how are you doing? Uh, tell us about the Federal Capital Territory and the issues around health workers. Hi, Millicent. It is a very worrisome situation. 40 health workers since, the, since this pandemic uh, hit Nigeria at the ending of February. And we actually have an expert here to talk uh, with us. Joining us right now is the president of the Association of Resident Doctors, FCT Administration, Dr. Roland Aibovo. It's nice to have you here with us. Thank sir. you very much. Now, a few of these people who tested positive, actually people that you know, how did you feel when you heard the figure, 40? Yeah, well, I I felt uh, I felt bad, but I felt worse uh, knowing the situation and the condition at which they became positive, because um, there are a lot of concealment of information. They were exposed, managing a patient that they didn't actually know the status, and the people that brought the patient or the patient themselves knew their status, and they did inform the doctors who were managing or the healthcare workers who were managing them for that uh, exposing them to to the COVID-19. If they knew, if they have told them that oh, we are COVID-19 positive and uh, of course, they had to take extra precaution to prevent themselves. They, are, they were not in the isolation centers where you have all the cover up to protect yourself and take extra precaution. But then, in the general hospitals where they presented, this information were concealed. They were managing this patient as if it were just every other patient. Yes, yeah, they may have, must have put on some minimal uh, protective uh, uh, materials or protective uh, uh, equipment. But then, you know, COVID-19 is actually uh, gotten through uh, droplets and things and coffee and all those. Yeah. So maybe somehow they must have done, maybe uh, examine the patient or carry out some invasive procedure on the patient. But the underlying factor there is that the information was concealed and further put them at, uh, at a break, greater risk. You're, and you're basically them. referring to all those stories we've heard uh, in some states in the country yeah. about you know the exposure. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay. testing centers uh, where they take the samples is a little more dangerous for a doctor at a testing center than the isolation center. Am I wrong? 
Well, uh, it's a little more dangerous because um, in isolation centers, they know that these patients are COVID-19 patients. So they take that, they've already have the precautions to put on the protective equipment to cover themselves, to protect themselves from the virus because they know exactly what they are dealing with. I'm not also saying that there's no risk given with the, uh, with the gown, with the donning of the protective apparel. But then the risk compared to those that who don't even know the, what the status of the patient is actually more because they are not putting on the cover, the protective apparel for them to actually guide protect themselves yeah. from getting That's infected. That's in the testing centers. People yes, are not, the they're not general, putting as, the, uh, as much precautions as they would in an isolation center. In an isolation center, center exactly. So. All right. you, you just came back from a training. Yeah. Um, there's, a, a, there's a drive right now, I think, to up the ante when it comes to precautionary measures that medical personnel are supposed to take at this time. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Okay, yeah, I just came back. The train actually to just update us on the inform information on the COVID-19 and also to actually uh, hinge on or rather reinforce emphasize the need for us to do more infection prevention and control. Because, um, yeah, on a normal day, you know, of course, we treat uh, all for diseases and everything, but this is a pandemic, and we need to make sure, as part of treating the patient, we need to also prevent others from getting it to contain the, the virus, the, the virus too. And I'm also, you know, now so many things are changing, like some of the um, information that I've given there, any of the isolation center have to have a unidirectional flow of movement. Because when you are coming in, normally on a, every good day, everybody coming from one uh, entrance and sometimes go out from the same entrance. But if you have to prevent infection mm. and also contain it, you have to be a unidirectional flow. You come in from this way and you go out so that you don't go into the isolation center yeah. or get infected one way or the other, pick up this virus, then you are coming out again, touching those surfaces where others Absolutely. will have to go and then the infection will also spread. And apart from that, I also have to let us know the protocol for each isolation yeah. they are using yeah. for the management. Mind you, there is no no there is no uh, established cure or treatment exactly. medication so for COVID-19. Yeah. So better right precaution to consider that we're able to contain the virus. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Roland Ibovo, for speaking yeah. with us today. Thank you very much. Back to you, Millicent. All right. Thank you so much, Kayla McGuire, our correspondent in the Federal Capital Territory. Let's now touch base with Bochi State, where our correspondent Hajar Aliyu has this update. Today is exactly one month since the index case of the coronavirus was confirmed in Bochi State. And it doesn't look like the pandemic has come to a halt in the state because the state government has just confirmed three fresh cases, bringing to 11 the total number of the coronavirus in Bochi State. Today is Friday and it is also the first day of the holy month of Ramadan. But it's quite an unusual day for many Muslims in Bochi State because some of the significant worships during this period have been altered due to the partial lockdown. Uh, we thought probably there should be a congregation, but uh, uh, probably in a very small group so that maybe uh, other people can be able to attend the congregation. But it's very, very unusual to see that the mosque is completely empty. In fact, even the imam is not here. <laughs> Nobody came. I know that we're trying to be a law-abiding citizens because already the government has said that we shouldn't, uh, you know, for our seven groups, we have to keep distance because of the uh, use of the coronavirus here. During the period of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are some, so many things that happens like this. A situation whereby, you know, the Sahabas will suspend the, the, the prayers, even some major activities, religious activities are being suspended. So to me, it's not something I can say. In one hand, I'm not happy about it, but for the safety of my life and uh, other people's life, and to contain the further spread of the coronavirus, which is ravaging the world, actually we have no option than to abide by the rules given by the state government and the health practitioners. It's a partial lockdown in Bochi State, so there's no restriction of movement. But some of the measures that have also been put in place to contain the spread of the coronavirus, like the closure of markets and the ban on al and Okada, will take effect from Sunday, the 26th of April. From Bochi State, Hajara Aliyu, Channels Television. Hey, thanks. Still to come on our COVID-19 updates, we find out what more states and the measures they're taking to curbing the pandemic. That's in a moment. Welcome back. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari is cautioning against actions that can spread coronavirus as Muslims in Nigeria join their counterparts around the world to welcome the Ramadan fasting period. Congratulating Muslim faithful, he expresses that this year's Ramadan is a big challenge as it is coming at a period of the global pandemic. The president advises all to avoid large gatherings and should try to have their prayers and meals individually 
or with their families at home. And now what are the different approaches states are putting in place to manage the pandemic? We begin with the Vice Chancellor, the Federal University, Dutse, who has revealed that the university will soon begin the clinical trial of a plant-based COVID-19 medicine. She said the university swung into action as soon as the pandemic broke in Nigeria, mandating the Directorate of Research and Development to come up with a homegrown solution to tackling the disease. Elsewhere, the Nigerian Air Force distributed palliatives to members of its host communities in the Gabi local government area of Kaduna State as part of efforts to alleviate the hardships been experienced by Nigerians, especially women and children, due to the COVID-19 lockdown. Palliatives were distributed to over 300 vulnerable households. In Edo State, the Catholic Diocese of Benin and the National Youth Service Corps made food and other material donations in Benin City to mitigate the hardships occasioned by the lockdown. Chairman of the state's COVID-19 task force assured donors that a committee is already in place to handle its distribution. And about 20,000 households in Ogun State and 50,000 in Lagos State are to benefit from a palliative intervention by the Victim Support Fund, VSF, through its COVID-19 task force. The items donated include bags of rice, other food items, medical equipment, PPEs, disinfectants, other essentials targeted at easing the pressure brought on by the lockdown. A joint technical team to fast track the movement of food and agricultural inputs across the country has been inaugurated, comprising officers of the Nigeria Police Force, Civil Defense, All Farmers Association, the National Union of Road Transport Workers. Members at the meeting appealed for the cooperation of state governors to allow for easy transportation of agricultural goods. And finally, in Adamawa State, the government imposed a lockdown throughout the state for another period of 14 days from midnight today to end Friday midnight, the 8th of May, 2020. A painful decision, according to the government, but it admits that uh, it's in the overall interest of stopping the spread of the virus. Now, according to the World Health Organization, when healthcare workers are at risk, we are all at risk. Let's delve further into how we can protect healthcare workers. Joining us in the studio is Dr. Angela Emechebe, a public health physician. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. First, I'd like to state um, so many figures coming in from China as to the number of healthcare workers infected and the number that has died in Italy as well. And we're looking at the situation also in Nigeria. You heard the doctor in Abu Jama yes, spoke to and what he felt was a major cause of that. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening? Um, initially, we had shortage of PPEs. But basically, what I would add is that infection prevention control should cut across all, there should be a synergy, there should be a protocol that should be used by each healthcare um, facility, whether it's the federal, whether it's the state, whether it's the, the local government. And there should be retraining and training of staff on, on infection and prevention control. Um, when this pandemic started, we were sent to the airport to work and screen passengers at the point of entry. We also had IPC training. Without that, a lot of healthcare, um, healthcare practitioners in a bid to treat your, the patient, you tend to forget that there's a pandemic. And then you don't wear the full PPEs. Every health worker should see each case as positive and do the, the needful so that they don't get infected. So the IPC training, wasn't it a, a thing that occurs maybe before now? We weren't expecting this pandemic. So it wasn't it an ongoing training? Are you saying, uh, can we say that our healthcare workers were prepared before it you know, okay, it, so I, okay. could, I could say for my hospital, where I work, Lagos State um, University Chin Hospital, because we also run the TB clinic, and we do six months of training and also infection risk assessment in, in our department. So everybody is aware. You shouldn't, I, I can't say probably about other facilities, but this should be an ongoing training, not only when we have pandemics. All right, we understand that uh, a doctor is joining us uh, from the United Kingdom, Edidyong Udofa. Thank you for joining us at this time. Perhaps to quickly get your um, idea as well as an emergency physician, give us an idea of what you're, you're facing this period. 
Um, thank you for having me. Um, well, first of all, it, it's um, it's a pandemic, and it's almost the same thing that um, every healthcare practitioner has experienced. And for being an emergency physician, we are um, at the forefront, and we are the ones that you know are actually first exposed to these patients. And, um, we see them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the numbers have gone from seeing none in a day to seeing as much as ten in a day per person. You know, so I mean, it's it's a pandemic that's not curbed at the moment yet. So we are. We're seeing these patients every day. Now, one uh, doctor's death in Africa is said to be a loss to more than 10,000 people. How worried are you with regards to um, the race the pandemic is spreading and the number of workers that are affected on the continent? Uh, well, to be honest, um, it's, it's something that calls for concern, knowing that we have um, fewer medical practitioners um, to per patients in 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 Africa. Um, I'm worried, but I think it's something that, you know, the governments of, of, the, of these nations can put different policies in place to help curb, um, you know, these um, shortages. For example, we could have, you know, re new training of, um, you know, younger doctors or, you know, people, other healthcare practitioners can step up because, um, you know, it, the practice of medicine basically is apprenticeship. So, a few things that were, were, you know, delegated to only doctors, you know, that we know that could be done by other healthcare practitioners. Training, training them in that regard could also help, you know, to cut some of these shortages. This is this is my own personal thinking. All right, we appreciate your time, Doctor Edidion Udofa, emergency physician, joining us from the UK. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Let's come back to you, Dr. Mitchabe. Uh, PPEs might just be the first step, and that's having enough of it, but then knowing how to use it, that's also another training. That's also a concern, because you need to know how to don and doff, doff off. And um, before you even go to infection prevention control, it's not just all about PPEs. You also need to triage. There should be a protocol for e each health facility, each healthcare worker, not just the doctors, the nurses, the ambulance drivers should know that. So when you triage the suspected cases, you isolate them. And then before you even do that, before you see any case, make sure you wear your PPEs fully kitted, not the hazmat suit this time. You know, have your, your face mask, your goggles, your, ha your hand gloves. See each person that you're meeting at this point as a probable and a suspected case. Yes. Cases. Appreciate your time. Dr. Angela Mechebe, public health physician, thank you for joining us. At thank this you time. very much. Well, in the United Kingdom, Labour's Shadow Health Secretary says there are questions that need to be answered about issues with the government's new coronavirus testing website. The website for key workers to book tests temporarily closed hours after it launched today. And with the Ramadan fast uh, starting today, uh, the world is, um, well, the figures of what the world on COVID-19 is today. Muslims across the world are today marking the start of the holy month of Ramadan. And many of them are doing so under a lockdown. Although some countries like Pakistan and Indonesia are allowing events to go ahead, for many people, social distancing measures mean traditions can't take place as usual this year, with people unable to pray at mosque or even gather for meals. More than 191,000 people have died due to the coronavirus pandemic, with 2.7 million infected globally. The United States has suffered one of the deadliest days of the pandemic with 3,332 fatalities in 24 hours. The number of deaths in the U.S. linked to COVID-19 is now over 49,960. The country has by far the highest death toll in the world and the number of confirmed infections is more than 869,000 with just under 10% of those already recovered. In positive developments, China has again reported no coronavirus deaths for the past day, making it a full week without fatalities. And CDC continues to work closely with states who can find the latest national strategy to scale up access to coronavirus disease testing in Nigeria and other public health advisories. Also, 
the World Health Organization. It comes alive with information, statistics, regular updates, and indeed how to efficiently uh, self-isolate or what it means by social distancing uh, as well. That's our COVID-19 update at this time. Another update comes your way again at 9 p.m. And Millicent Walker continue to stay safe. Remember, Channels Television has the latest update on our website.